Uh, thanks very much. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, look, I, as I said before, I'm very pleased to be here in Beijing in person on the 50th anniversary of the diplomatic ties between Australia and China. Uh, it is an historic day today and reminds us that uh, the foundations of this bilateral diplomatic relationship uh, were set by Gough Whitlam half a century ago. I've just had uh, the privilege of holding the sixth Australia-China Foreign and Strategic Dialogue, uh, a very constructive meeting with China's State Councillor and the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Wang Yi. Uh, it was our third face-to-face -face meeting since uh, the Albanese government took office. It's our fourth discussion uh, and given the length of the meeting it was a very good opportunity dis to discuss uh, issues in greater depth. Uh, the government's made clear that we believe it's in Australia's interest for our relationship with China to be stabilised. We've also made clear we believe it is in China's interest for the relationship to be stabilised. Uh, we've continued to express the view that the comprehensive strategic partnership between Australia and China uh, is architecture for dialogue and for engagement uh, which uh, will benefit both countries. We've continu continued to uh, put the view uh, that we are able to grow our bilateral relationship and uphold our respective national interests if we navigate our differences wisely. And that is the challenge for this generation, is to navigate those differences wisely. Uh, I did set out our positions on issues which I know are so important to uh, Australians uh, and are important to the government. Uh, relevant consular mat matters, trade blockages, human rights, as well as regional security, international security, and the norms and global rules which underpin our prosperity. We have agreed to maintain high level engagement and we've agreed to further dialogue in a range of those areas. I'm happy to take questions. Uh, Minister Wong, uh, the, uh, the ambassador of China today said that it has been uh, vigorously raising the case that to get consular officials in here to see Cheng Wei and Yang Jun. Correct. Did, did you discuss that and have, has the, have the officials here said that it will happen? Uh, look, of, of course I discussed uh, Ms Cheng Wei and Dr Yang. Uh, we raise that in every senior level engagement that we are able to and I've raised that in each of the discussions I've had uh, with the State Councillor uh, and we advocate for a range of things in those discussions. Uh, they include uh, for those Australians to be reunited with their families as soon as possible. Uh, but we also advocate for uh, the observance of our consular agreements and for those Australians who have consular access. Uh, obviously COVID has uh, presented some problems, uh, but uh, you, you, it is the case that Australia does believe that those Australians should be given appropriate consular access and we'll continue to advocate for that. Minister, ahead of the meeting you said having this dialogue in and of itself would be a successful outcome. Now that that's happened, What's the next step toward this path of stabilising the relationship mm. with China mm. and any other outcomes that you can report from the meeting? Uh, look, uh, uh, we had a, a good discussion about a number of issues uh, and uh, uh, particularly in the context of trade, there was a discussion about uh, opportunities for further dialogue to work through how we might do what I think is in the best interest of both countries and consumers in both countries and certainly in, in, in terms of you know, Australian exporters and, and Chinese consumers and that is for the trade blockages to be removed. I think the point I was making uh, and I'll continue to make is dialogue is a prerequisite for managing uh, this relationship wisely. You know, we are very different countries. You know, we, are, we are very different political systems, we are very different uh, have different views about um, you know, how uh, the, our political systems should operate uh, and we, we have different interests uh, but we need to seek to manage those differences wisely and dialogue is a prerequisite for that. Uh, so I am seeking, uh, I have suggested and, and, and I think this is something that is consistent with the approach that China is taking that we, we have a more structured dialogue uh, such as that which is envisaged under the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership where there are a range of dialogues including uh, trade minister, uh, economic minister's dialogue. Uh, 
Just two things. Would, would you expect the latest meetings to resume on the bed? I mean, would you predict the state and the Albanese coming here to oh, look the next year? Well, I think there are steps we are taking, and you've seen since the government came to office, we're seeking to take those steps calmly and in a considered way. Uh, we uh, met, I met with um, Foreign Minister Wang Yi, uh, State Councillor Wang Yi in, in Bali early on. Uh, we had another meeting at the UN General Assembly. We had a telephone conversation. Obviously the Prime Minister and President Xi met in the margins of the G20, which is very important. Now we've had this meeting. So you know, we, we, we will look to continue to have dialogue, including structured dialogue on issues which are difficult. Ultimately, you know, uh, we, we, we believe it's possible to uh, grow our bilateral relationships, safeguard our national interests if we manage our differences wisely, and that's what the government's focused on. Could you elaborate on the human rights issues you raised about the treatment of the Uyghur minority, and also was South China Sea discussed? Uh, look, uh, we, we uh, obviously referenced uh, global rules and norms, as I've said, uh, and we'll have an opportunity to discuss more of that over dinner. But in relation to human rights, you know, the position Australia articulates, foreign ministers before me have articulated, and, and I have articulated, is to say, look, Australia believes you know, human rights are universal. You know, we have a principled view about the... Uh, uh, observance and respect for human rights and that applies in in terms of our views about uh, Xinjiang or Tibet uh, or Hong Kong that that those are principles that Australia will continue to advocate and you, as as you would expect I did so. Just, just on trade, uh, would, would Australia support China joining the CPTPP as part of this discussion around trade? Well look uh, you know uh, I've previously said in relation to the CPTPP, our focus is on the current UK accession uh, and uh, uh, any uh, economy that sought to join the CPTPP would need to ensure that all parties uh, to, the, to the agreement are confident that it could meet its very high standards. Thank you very much.